Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today um, here at six o'clock for this hummingbird presentation. My name is uh, Ranger Kate. I'm a park ranger here at Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area for the Bureau of Land Management. I've worked here at Red Rock Canyon for 26 years, but I've been with BLM for 24. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy our presentation today. I'm going to uh, share my screen and then we're also going to share a poll because I would like to know where you're from. So let's see. Share my screen. Oh, there we go. Go ahead and <clears throat> let me know where you're from. Perfect. Okay. Um, and just to let you know, there is a Q&A box uh, as well as a chat box. You're more than welcome to put any questions you have in there. Um, my cohort here, Annika, she'll be monitoring for those and she'll either uh, try to answer them or she will send me the question and I'll answer it um, as soon as we can. All right. So it seems like we have a few people from here in Las Vegas and a few people from outside of Las Vegas. So very good. I'm going to share some of those results here. All right. So we'll close out of that. And then um, do -do -do. see if we can do this from the beginning here. <laughs> there we go. Annika is also my IT help if I need it. So. <laughs> um, all right. So today we're going to talk about hummingbirds of Red Rock Canyon. So we have another poll for you. I'll just let you know this is who I am. Of course, not the picture, obviously, but uh, who I am. So <clears throat> true or false, hummingbirds are found all over the world. So what do you think? True or false, hummingbirds are found all over the world. OK. So we got half and half here. So the true, the answer is false. They're not found all over the world. Um, they are found here uh, in North America and South America only. Let's see if we can get that pull off. There we go. So whoop. share my next picture, maybe. There we go. Okay, so hummingbirds are kind of a rare treat for those of us who live in the Americas, both north and south. There are over 340 species of hummingbirds, but only uh, 17 of them actually nest within uh, the United States. And we here in Las Vegas are blessed to have three of them as pretty much residents uh, in the area. So in our photo here, of course, these are all the males because males have to be prettier. They have to attract the females. They don't, you know, they have to work harder. So we have our costas on the left, which has that nice purple uh, plumage on the top. We have the annas in the middle with the nice kind of a raspberry color. And then we have the black chin, which also has more of a blue purple on the right hand side. And I tried to address um, all the where the photos came from and who who I got them from. So these happen to be from one of our volunteers here at Red Rock Canyon, Roger Hembry. Um, so hummingbirds being rare, when when the colonists came over, they would they would write back about these birds that they saw, but they were not believed that as letters were coming in, the colonists were not believed that there could not be such an animal that flew like a bee but was not an insect. It was a bird. So. Um, hummingbirds were definitely thought of to be not a bird they were more of an insect just because you could not have a bee or a bird that um, fluttered like a, a bumblebee um, here at Red Rock Canyon we do have these nice wonderful three but the most common one that you'll find pretty much in the Las Vegas Valley if you have hummingbird feeders of your own are the Annas um, they're they like they don't mind the uh, cooler weather that we get in the winter time and they so they like the they just kind of stick around all year um, now, hummingbirds are really interesting in the fact that, they, you know, obviously they um, have hearts, so they have heartbeats, but they sleep um, kind of differently than other animals. So let's start with heartbeats. So first of all, our heartbeat, normal heartbeat in a human is anywhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute. A hummingbird can have anywhere between 1,280 beats per minute. That's about two, 21 beats per second. Um, I don't know if I could... I. <laughs> I think if uh, any of us have heartbeats 
running faster than normal, you know, we think something's wrong. But hummingbirds being a small animal has those fast paced heartbeats. And the smaller they are, the faster um, their beats go. So in, in comparison to other birds, uh, such as an eagle, eagles, they're a large bird, but they only have their heartbeats 100 to 120 beats per minute. That's about two beats per second. So again, the hummingbird has a much faster heartbeat than most other birds uh, that are around. Now they do sleep. We have a picture here of our Annas, also the male to the right at the photo on the right, but the two that are sleeping are both females. You can see they don't have that wonderful raspberry plumage. When they do go into a deep sleep, it's called toper. And they go into that about once a night. Uh, it's that nice deep sleep. And when they're perching, their uh, feet will clamp enough that it, unless the animal wakes up, it could hang upside down, such as in the top left photo. And they don't, they won't fall off. Um, they do sleep with their eyes closed. Uh, you know, not all birds and all animals will do that, but they do sleep with their eyes closed. And when they are in that toper state, their heartbeat goes from that 1,260 to anywhere between 50 and 180 beats. So you know, they definitely slow the roll when they are taking, taking a nap. Excuse me a minute. I've got a cough, so I'm going to <laughs> mute a minute here. Sorry about that, I got a tickle in my throat and it's not going away. Wings, I like this picture because you can see it's one of my favorite pic pictures that Roger has taken because you can see the vibrations of the wing beats in this photo. Um, they can actually flap their wings 55 times per second. Uh, just, I mean, I know when we have kids or we see kids and they're out flying around like birds and pretending they're birds. You know, they just kind of flap their wings one at a little bit at a time, their arms go about. Now imagine those same kids trying to flap their wings in the form of their arms 55 times a second. I think that would be a good nap time activity for them. Um, so hummingbirds are considered uh, one of the uh, faster birds in the bird kingdom. And again, the, they can do 55 times per second and they do have a there is a species of hummingbird called the um, amethyst wood star. It's found in South America. It's found in Brazil. And his, the wing beats on that particular hummingbird are 80 beats a second. But what makes hummingbirds really interesting in the fact that we know they can hover. I'm sure everybody has seen a hummingbird just kind of hover, whether it's above a flower or even a feeder. But they can fly backwards. They can fly side to side. And they can fly upside down. They have a way to maneuver their wings that they can actually twist them to the point that they can come out or out of a, a drop <clears throat> and recover from that. So hummingbirds have some, they're just kind of unique in that, in that respect. They never, or I should say they rarely walk. Hummingbirds will perch, but rarely will you see them walk. Their legs are so small and uh, weak enough that it cannot hold their body weight on their legs. So it's a rare occasion that you'll see them walking, but when they do, it's more of a shuffle, kind of like a penguin. And I do believe there's a YouTube video out there showing a hummingbird on a feeder walking to get some water. <clears throat> but again, rarely will you actually see them walk. So if you do see them walking, that's quite the treat. All right, what do you call a group of hummingbirds? This is probably one of my more favorites. So the slide on the left is um, of broadbill hummingbirds, which they come through the Las Vegas area on occasion. They're kind of migrant. They don't stick around like the Annas, uh, the black chinned and the, um, the Costas. But this one on the left, you'll see them kind of flitting and fluttering around. And then on the right hand side, uh, you ha we have a uh, Rufus that is giving us a I guess his opinion, I don't know. <laughs> um, but a group of hummingbirds, I always thought, you know, you have birds, right? Birds of a feather flock together. So you always, birds are a flock, right? Hummingbirds are not called a flock. A group of hummingbirds have, are, are con, they go by a variety of different names. So you're gonna have to decide which one is your favorite because I'm gonna ask that in a minute. So they have, they go by a charm, a charm of hummingbirds, a tune of hummingbirds, a glittering of hummingbirds, 
a hover of hummingbirds. And then my personal favorite is a bouquet of hummingbirds. So I'm gonna put up a poll and tell me which one you like best. Do you like a charm, a tune, a glittering, a shimmer, a hover, or a bouquet? John, can you put that up? I can't put it up when I'm sharing. There we go, thank you. Cool. I can tell you, Annika's is a glittering. She likes a glittering as well. So looks like we're we're all kind of split on this. So let, me sh let me share those one more time. Sorry about that. Okay, stop there. There we go. Next, there we go. Nests. Hummingbird nests are kind of fun to find. There, and you most often I find them there by accident. Uh, they're about the size of a quarter anywhere. They kind of range from the size of a dime to a quarter, depending on the species. One, the average ones I've seen are more the size of a quarter. Um, they like building them in trees or in shrubbery, anywhere between 10 feet, 90 feet off the ground, and usually on the fork of the branch, because that gives it a little extra stability. The females are the ones that build the nests. No, they have to do all the work. So the females are the ones that build the nests, and they find them, they make... Um, cobwebs, spider webs, uh, plant fluff, you're looking at twigs, um, feathers from other birds, very, you know, various other material that they will use to build these nests. And the nests are very, they're kind of cup shaped and the tops of them have a, um, a rim on the top. So it's kind of folds over. So it has that nice little rim. And they're also flexible and they're flexible so that, um, the, when the babies hatch, when the eggs hatch, and so they grow, the nest will also grow along with them. So this one, let's see, we have the one in the top left is um, by one of our volunteers, Greg Darrow, that's actually from his house. The bottom middle is in a creosote bush, and then the one in the upper right, I believe was also, it's a costa sitting on a nest of eggs, but I'm not sure where that nest is. So we have um, an Anna's on the left, a black chin in the middle, and a costa's on the right. So I tried to identify those as much as possible. More on our nests. So the nests that we have here are in some of our exhibits that we have on display. So I pulled those out just so you could have comparison with the size of a quarter as to how big they are. Um, so again, they're about the size of a quarter, at least the top portion and the bottom, you know, kind of funnels down. And they do have that cup so that, um, and they're flexible. So they'll go ahead and open. And then hummingbirds also will lay on average two eggs. Rarely will there be three or one. So on average, it's about two. And those eggs are about the size of a green pea or a jelly bean. So again, the photo here I took um, with the jelly bean just to kind of give you size for guidance. And that was a jelly belly jelly bean. So those are a little smaller than the average jelly beans as well. And they're my favorite. So that's why we get those. So babies. I don't know about you, but birds are ugly when they're babies. <laughs> they grow up, they'd be really pretty, but birds are just kind of ugly when they're when they hatch. They're just featherless, big-eyed birds. Um, so when babies hatch, they are they are blind, but they can still, even though they're blind and they can't see, they can identify their mother coming in with food by the sound of its wing beats as well as uh, smell, mostly by wing beats. They can actually identify their mother by how she flies. So these guys will hatch, they, they're in egg form and then they'll hatch you know, 15 to 18 days uh, after their, uh, during incubation. And uh, baby birds, they will double in size, the hummingbirds will double in size about every day uh, for the first uh, few days. So. You know, when they hatch, they're going to be the size you know, of your pinky, maybe that first knuckle of your pinky finger, and then they're going to double in size every day up to then. And eventually, when they get ready, they want to fledge, they want to leave the nest. Uh, that'll be about 18 to 28 days after they hatch. And when they fledge, when they leave the nest, they're not coming back. They're like, okay, they're free, fly, and they'll go and find some food and find a place to build their own nest. 
lifespan for hummingbirds. Um, although they hatch in about 18 to 28 days before they leave the nest, they, their lifespan is anywhere between three and five years. So they're not a long living bird, um, but consider, considering the size, I'd say they do pretty good. Food. Um, I should have put up a poll as to how many of you have bird, how, how many of you have hummingbird feeders. And I didn't think about doing that. So if you want to put in your chat and let Annika know whether or not you have uh, hummingbird feeders, uh, go ahead and do that and let her know how many hummingbird feeders you may have. So uh, food, as far as our humming, as our hummers go, most often they're nectar eaters. We all think of them as nectar eaters. They can eat anywhere from 12 times to their own body weight in a day. They need to eat every eight to 10 minutes. I'm lucky if I eat twice a day. I can't imagine eating eight to 10, you know, 12 times a day and every eight to 10 minutes. Um, in order to keep up with the metabolism, if, if we were a hummingbird, if a person, if a human was a hummingbird, they would have to eat 285 pounds of meat to keep up with the metabolism of a hummingbird. I think it'd be nice if I could have like a 10th percentage of the metabolism of a hummingbird. That would be good. <laughs> so hummingbirds, they do take nectar from flowers. Their favorite flowers are going to be those cone-shaped flowers, such as honeysuckle, um, Palmer's penstemon. Out here we have uh, trees called wash desert willows or wash willows. They like those as well. Um, you know, so they definitely they'll, they'll have they'll use other flowers, but they like those tubular flowers. So if you are planting flowers in your yard to attract those hummingbirds, keep those tubular flowers in mind. Um, however, they're not just nectar eaters. I was surprised to find out a few years ago, as I'm seeing a hummingbird hover in my yard, wondering what he was doing or it was doing. They are also insect eaters. Um, they eat the insect for the protein. Um, more than just the nectar. So I was kind of surprised to find that out. They do prefer those smaller little things, so like little small beetles, weevils, flies, gnats. In my yard, it's usually gnats that they're flying after, mosquitoes, aphids. And because they can hover, they'll hover um, near a plant or a shrub and they'll pick off the insects uh, off the trees or off the shrubbery as well. Um, so they definitely like those. And their favorite insect of choice are spiders. Go figure. Um, so definitely those spiders. More food. So again, flowers, they like, um, they'll hover and they'll extend their bill all the way down, like in the Mojave thistle on the left-hand side. That's a Mojave thistle. Our hummingbird has their little beak in all the way down to the bottom. And their tongue, the one in the middle, his tongue is sticking out at you. Hopefully you're not offended by having your tongue, tongue stuck out at you today. Their tongue, they can stick out their tongue the length of their beak. And their tongue has little tiny hairs on the sides of it to help collect those that nectar and it's also got a forked tongue um, so because of that because hummingbirds put their nose their beak right all the way in there and they have those hairs on their tongues they're also excellent pollinators for our flowers so you know, when we think of hummingbirds I, not everybody thinks of them as being a very important pollinator we usually think of bees and flies and wasps and uh, moths and butterflies as pollinators, but hummingbirds are a very good uh, pollinator source as well. So very important. When you see your hummingbirds, sometimes, on the, especially on the feeders, uh, they'll go ahead and they'll either hover as they put their nose in their beaks into and their tongues into the feeders themselves, or sometimes they'll perch on the feeder as well. Um, hummingbirds do have a favorite color. Um, it's red and it has found there was a 19 or I'm sorry 2020 study done and uh, let me read that here I had to write that down so this is a 2020 study describes the ability of hummingbirds to see colors invisibly to the human eye so according to this research they can see um, colors that are UV plus red so UV red and UV violet or purple and also UV green I had heard of ultraviolet red and ultraviolet purple but I had never heard of ultraviolet green before so hummingbirds see on a spectrum much wider than the human eye, as many animals do. Feeders. So looks like um, Don Marie has three feeders in her yard. That's how many I have. Uh, so these are the different types of feeders. They come in various sizes and shapes, colors. Um, you know, although red stands out. So one of the, like I said, the favorite color of a hummingbird is usually red. So those red feeders are probably better, but I've, the one in the top second is the one I have. It's kind of purple um, on the top, but uh, those are the ones that I like 
myself, I like them. They're decorative, they look fancy, and they're glass. You want to use glass feeders. Plastic ones, especially here in Las Vegas, break down because of the can they put the chemicals in the in the feeder. So <clears throat> excuse me. They break down really easy because of the heat, because of the sunlight. So glass feeders uh, are definitely a much better and preferred uh, feeder for your hummingbirds. Also, and Domery, you said you had three. Three is good. We should really have no less than two, simply because hummingbirds are competitive. You're going to have, there's usually an alpha, and it can be an alpha, alpha male or an alpha female. And if there's only one feeder, that alpha is going to chase away those other birds. So if you have at least two feeders, it's less, um, less chasing away. So the alpha will come and dominate one feeder while the other birds are able to use um, the second one. So minimum of two feeders is always good. And I know we have a lot of volunteers here who have many feeders in, their, uh, in the yard as well. So I'm going to give you the recipe for our hummingbird food. So I'll give you a few minutes so you can pull out and take a picture of that with your camera if you want to, um, if you don't have the, the recipe already. But it's basically one part sugar, one cup of sugar to four parts water. So one cup sugar to four parts water. And do not use anything other than plain white sugar. No, no brown sugar, no stevia, no honey, no rock salt or rock sugar rather. No sugar substitute. It has to be plain white sugar. And you mix that until it's dissolved. Um, if you are going to put it right in your feeder, go ahead and wait till it's it's dissolved to put it in. If you're going to keep it stored in the refrigerator for a little bit, you might actually want to uh, boil that to make sure that uh, that uh, sugar gets dissolved before you put it in the refrigerator. And then um, change out the food in the feeders every 48 to 72 hours, especially here in Las Vegas with our heat. That sounds um, like a lot, but here because of the heat we get fungus and bacteria that grow in those feeders and unfortunately uh, it can affect the hummingbird by the part that um, the, their tongue will come out and then they can't retract it they can't put their tongue back in so when that occurs it's fatal to the hummingbird so hummingbird feeders especially in the heat should be changed out every 48 to 72 hours Okay, I usually wash mine with a little bit of white vinegar in there because that helps uh, clean out some of that extra bacteria. Just make sure that everything, soap, vinegar, water, make sure it's all cleaned out thoroughly because we don't want to, you know, if you've tasted soapy water before, it's not very pleasant. Um, we have had the question sometimes about red food coloring. Don't put red food coloring in there. You don't need it. Um, you're just adding chemicals to the recipe so they don't need it just plain sugar plain water is good for them so no food coloring please all right let's see if we can get this video started this was taken Annika took this outside of the back of our visitor center of the administration building and listen to these little guys So I don't know if you've noticed the red, the raspberry chin on them. So these are, both of them are Anna's and they're being a little competitive. <laughs> there we go. And it was just by luck because uh, she wasn't paying attention to it. Annika got the calicos in the background. Oops, there we go. Predators. I've never thought about hummingbirds having predators because they're so small and because they're so fast and, and they hover. I've never really thought about hummingbirds having predators, but why wouldn't they, right? So because hummingbirds do utilize uh, spider webs and in their nest building, they do sometimes get caught into those webs. And unfortunately, um, good luck for the spider, bad luck for the hummingbird. Um, when he can't escape, he's volunteered to be lunch for our for spiders um, but they do have they have a variety so not just spiders they also have large um, you have uh, oh, praying mantis sorry the word escaped me for a minute praying mantis uh, spiders other birds such as road runners and owls <clears throat> um, you know so a variety of things can uh, predate on our hummingbirds 
um, other birds such as owls, crows, road, roadrunners, and then even our grackles. And we certainly have lots of grackles in the neighborhood as well as our crows. So um, keep an eye out for them in the area. What's interesting about one particular hummingbird, it's a black chin, I was reading it earlier um, when I was doing the research, black chin hummingbirds will actually build their nests closer, this is in Arizona, closer to, what is it, northern goshawk and cooper's hawks, so two birds of prey that you would think would eat the hummingbirds. These hummingbirds build their nests closer to these hawks because the hawks pretty much decide they're too small, they're not worth the challenge. So, so they pretty much leave the hummingbirds alone. And research has found that hummingbirds that nest within a 300 meter range of these two hawks, these two birds of prey, are likely to raise both of their young to success. So I thought that was kind of interesting that uh, they have just adapted in the fact they realized that these birds of prey, um, which you would think would be a predator, is actually protecting them from other things. Humans, for the most part, are not a predator per se, uh, simply for the fact that it's against the law for us to keep hummingbirds in, uh, in uh, bird cages or harm them, things like that. So it is against the law for us to do that. But unfortunately, where humans play that part is more um, in the environmental factor, you know, where we like to um, where we're building or recreating and you know, if we're not recreating responsibly and loss of habitat, loss of flowers, um, you know, from human impact, but also, of course, by the two pictures here in the screen, you also have fire and you have flooding, especially in here in Las Vegas, you have those two environmental factors that do play a big role in being a threat to our hummingbirds. Um, okay. Let's see, we're gonna talk a little bit about our residents. So we have three particular birds, three particular hummingbirds that like um, the Las Vegas area. These are the three, you've seen this slide before, it was the one in the front. So we're gonna talk about Annas first. Um, our Annas, the three on the left are our male and the two on the right are the female. So Annas are our most common bird for hummers here in Las Vegas. They are also more resilient, I believe I said, to the cold. And you can see in the map, they actually go all the way up from Canada down the West Coast and into uh, uh, Baja, Mexico. So they're very hardy. They, they like the area, they're very hardy. Um, they'll also go as far as um, Western Texas. So they can migrate all that, that far as well. But for us, they are a permanent resident. They don't come and go, they like it here. So they're gonna stay. Um, as far as size goes, they get approximately four inches. So consider your middle finger and maybe down um, kind of below that, that knuckle, the inside knuckle. So that's about four inches. It'll be about four inches in length. And then their wingspan is going to be about five inches. So they're pretty, pretty good sized bird as a hummingbird comes. Um, they like, let's see, Anna's like building their hummingbirds on uh, different platforms, and they will start building their nests in early December. Well, I think most of us think of hummingbirds as a spring bird. They start building, Anna start building their nest in December and uh, gets ready to, to lay her eggs um, right soon around January, February, somewhere in there. So hummingbirds, like I said, or Anna's are identified by that raspberry or that pink colored chin. And sometimes that'll go up to the crown as well, their pink crown. And the males are the ones that are prettier because they have to show off more for their females. And then the females are more of a, their throat is, they ha they'll have a couple, sometimes you'll see little red flecks under their throat, but for the most part, they're that grayish white underneath. Um, and the female hummingbirds I have found I'm still trying to figure out how to identify the three we have females. Males are a little easier, they're more showy, so they're easier, but the females are still a little more difficult for me. And then the Anna's hummingbird got the name, they called her Anna's, because she was named after Anna Messina, who was a uh, the wife of a prince, a French prince, who was a bird collector in the 19th century. So this bird has been called the Anna's hummingbird since the early 19th century. And it's more common. So I pretty much say hello to Anna every morning. Black chinned. These are our black chins. So we have the left is our fem or is our males and the right is our females. And again, if you look at the females, although the Anna's has more green to her, um, they're little, they look very similar. 
<clears throat> so the black chins are found more in the mountainous areas, so the Rocky Mountains, um, all the way down in towards Texas, as you can see through the map. Um, but they, uh, for here again, they just kind of, they like hanging out, they like st staying here. Um, they don't, they don't migrate too often or too far. Um, they like to migrate, they will migrate down to South Cal California, Southern Arizona, all the way up to Texas and Mexico for the winter, but then they come back up. And most here in Las Vegas, kind of like the snowbirds, they just kind of stick around for the summer. Um, when they do build their nest, when the females build their nest, it's more of a deeper nest than the other two that we have. So they do make a deep, deep nest with cups again, but they're a little deeper than the others. The males will have a um, metallic green type of head as well as that black chin, it's that violet throat. You can definitely tell it's that violet, but sometimes it's so purple, it looks black um, in the photo. So it's, you definitely are reliant on sometimes the sun glare to catch a um, black chin hummingbirds and ruby, ruby throated hummingbirds and ruby throated hummingbirds are only found east of the Mississippi River. Um, it's the only hummingbird really that is found there. And they apparently look a lot alike. Uh, in the area. So I don't know. I say ruby throated, you would think they would have more of a ruby colored neck, but apparently they look very similar to these. As far as length goes, where our Anna's was four inches, these little guys are slightly smaller. They're about three and a half inches. So again, about the size of the your middle finger, a little bit more. And then their wingspan is just about four inches. So a little smaller than our Anna's in the area. And Costa's. Costas, these photos don't do a, a, this Costa bird justice. If you see these in person, you'll just be floored because they are royal purple heads. They have royal purple heads. Um, they're pretty fabulous. And as you can see in the the map, you know their their range is certainly less than um, the black throated as, as well as the Anna's. So this little guy, he likes more of that Southern Nevada. Southern Arizona, Southern California, all the way down to Baja uh, in the area. So that's kind of his range. Um, they have that again, that deep violet purple head. And then um, let's see, these guys like to, uh, oh, they actually will colonize together uh, in as much as about six. They'll colonize about six nests in a hundred uh, foot radius. And they use that kind of as a, um, oh, kind of as a ruse, I guess it helps protect from predators as well. Uh, they, they build six nests, but they lay eggs in only one. And this one's more similar to the uh, black chin and the fact that it's about three and a half inches in length and about four and a half inch wings, wingspan. So not only do they have similar coloring, um, they're also the same size. So a little more, a little more difficult to see or to identify. And again, I'm still working on the female identification. <laughs> Males are so much easier just because they're colorful. So in variety of cultures, hummingbirds mean a lot of different things. So here we have hummingbirds can potentially mean in some uh, cultures, lightness of being or enjoyment of life, being more present, independence, bringing playfulness and joy into your life, lifting up negativity, swiftness, ability to respond quickly, and resiliency. And I think this year, I, the hummingbird should be everybody's symbol just for the fact of resiliency um, over this last year. So these are the resources I used. Um, if you want to take a picture of those, these are some great websites, both for hummingbirds as well as um, a couple of the um, Bird and Hike is good for many things within Southern Nevada. But I did go to Hummingbird Central for some information. Of course, Audubon Society and Red Rock Audubon Society, Birds and Blooms and World of Hummingbirds, those websites. And then the photos I used were from Roger Hembry and Alan Schmeyer uh, on most of them. And then Friends of Red Rock Canyon, some of their photo contest entries were used as well as um, information from Tom Mullins Red Rock Canyon Visitor Guide. And I can tell you if you're interested in learning more about hummingbirds or taking more of an active part in caring and keeping of our hummingbirds here at Red Rock Canyon, we do have four hummingbird feeders. 
we are dependent on volunteers to come out and clean those feeders and mix up the, the food and the nectar and put them back in and just carry and keep those. So Friends of Red Rock Canyon does have a hummingbird team. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can always uh, look at friendsofredrockcanyon.org or give them a call and uh, see how you can get involved in that. So um, I'm going to leave that open for about a for about a minute. See if anybody has any questions. Annika's monitoring the uh, those questions and answers. So I have to see if you have any questions after that. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever. And uh, in the meantime, I'll stop sharing here. Everybody's quiet today. All right, everyone. Well, I want to thank you for spending uh, the last 40 minutes with me. I appreciate you jumping on here. I hope you learned something new. Um, I always learn something new when I do these. So uh, yeah, otherwise, unless you have any questions, enjoy the rest of your evening. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next Zoom that we do. Bye, everybody.